Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we talked extensively about the functions of osteoblasts and osteocytes. We talked about the organization of the osteon, which is the functional unit of compact bone, and we saw how osteoblasts differentiate into osteocytes, which function in maintaining the integrity of the bone tissue. Then we took a look at some cool electron microscopy images and immunohistochemistry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to transition to a new cell type, which is called an osteoclast. This is a cell type that is not derived from the same lineage as these two right here. So what I didn't show in this video is that osteoblasts actually come from a precursor cell called an osteoprogender cell. The osteoprogenitor cell can then differentiate into an osteoblast, and then through the process, as we talked about in the last video, the osteoblast differentiates into an osteocyte. The osteocyte functions in maintaining bone tissue. The osteoblast functions in secreting the matrix that makes up the bone tissue, so it builds bone. And that process is actually termed bone deposition. That's very important, bone deposition. In contrast, osteoclasts, first of all, come from a different cell lineage, and they function in an opposite process called bone resorption. So while osteoblasts do bone deposition, which increases the density of bones, osteoclasts actually remove pieces from the matrix, so that's collagen and calcium, and so they actually decrease the density of the bone matrix, or they decrease bone mineral density. And that process is called bone resorption, and it's done so through osteoclasts. So before we look at their function in any detail, let's talk about where osteoclasts come from. They do not come from this cell lineage. They are separate. In fact, their shape is actually very different. They actually resemble more macrophages, which is actually where they come from. So macrophages, yes, they come from monocytes originally, but what has to happen in order to form an osteoclast is you have to have the fusion of several macrophages, many macrophages. These are already large cells, and so first the macrophage has to migrate from the blood to the bone tissue because that's where the osteoclast is formed. So once the macrophages have migrated to the bone, several of the macrophages are going to fuse together. Now notice they form this cell, which is very large. It's the fusion result of many macrophages, and so it's aptly called a giant cell. Notice that the giant cell is literally just a conglomerate of all the macrophages. So all these nuclei that came from the macrophage are contained within the giant cell. Okay? Now the giant cell, under some conditions that we won't talk about, is stimulated to differentiate then into an osteoclast. Okay? And the reason it's important to understand that the osteoclast comes from macrophages is that the osteoclast is in some ways going to share some common function with macrophages. Because what do macrophages do? Well, they degrade things, right? Um, now they degrade it through phagocytosis, so if you have foreign bacteria, uh, pathogens of any kind, if they somehow make their way into tissues, the macrophage is going to destroy them. It's going to degrade them. In the same way, osteoclast is going to degrade things, but it's not going to function in the immune system. It's going to degrade bone tissue, specifically the bone matrix. Now, when we look at an osteoclast, to me, they kind of look like a metroid or a metroid, whatever it is, from with that Nintendo game with Samus Aran. Kind of looks like a metroid. Um, it looks almost like a jellyfish. And this part up here is where all the cytoplasm is, all the nuclei. But if we look at the bottom, these little tentacle things that we're going to see is actually called the ruffled border. A very common term when you're talking about osteoclasts. And these tentacles are going to kind of move over the surface of the bone. And what we're going to see is actually that this area is going to have some secretions from it, and these secretions from the ruffled border are actually going to be what degrades the bone tissue. So what I want to kind of look at first is a really cool image. This is a scanning electron microscope image. So all this gray region, this is the bone tissue. This cell right here, this is the osteoclast. And actually, the osteoclast is sitting on the surface of the bone. These little projections down here, we can't see much of them because they would technically be under this cell. These are actually some, a couple pieces that are visible of the ruffled border. 
And what's really cool is they actually got this. This is a real image of a real osteoclast on the bone. This region that's colored a little bit differently that you can clearly see is degraded, this is the degraded bone tissue. I find that extremely fascinating, but you can actually see on an SEM image the osteoclasts having degraded some of that bone tissue. So osteoclasts are bone-eating cells, okay? And the way that they actually degrade this bone tissue, which is called bone resorption, is these osteoclasts contain granules that have digestive enzymes, which are from uh, lysosomes. I should actually go ahead and spell that correctly. And it also contains acid, among some other things. So these osteoclasts, they kind of move over the surface of bone, and they degranulate. And a lot of their substances are released kind of into this ruffled border area, which allows them to degrade the bone. And they're going to degrade both the organic part and the inorganic part. So there's several enzymes here that are and other substances that are important for degrading the organic part. For example, they have enzymes called matrix metalloproteinases, cathepsin K, collagenases. These three are important for actually hydrolyzing and breaking down the collagen and other organic pieces. They also have proton pumps called V-type ATPases, which actually just secrete acid. And the acid will help denature proteins on the bone surface, like the collagen, and that makes it easier for these three enzymes to degrade the components of the matrix. All right? So these are secreted from that ruffled border region. But there's also substances that can help degrade the inorganic part. In addition to degrade it to denaturing the collagen and other proteins, the acid that's released by the V-type ATPases will actually stimulate the inorganic part, all these metal ions, to come apart and make the calcium easier to be released from the bone. They also have this enzyme called tartrate-resistant acid phosphatase, which is going to work with the acid in order to remove especially the calcium from the matrix. Because remember, one of the functions of bone is to store calcium. Now, when calcium gets released from this degraded area or this resorbed area, the calcium is going to go into the blood. And that's going to have some important implications later. But overall, the function of osteoclasts is to decrease bone mineral density. And the way that it decreases bone mineral density is by both degrading the inorganic part, releasing the calcium and other things, but also degrading that organic part. You can't have one without the other, so these both have to be taken out by the osteoclast. Okay. Um, here's another picture down here. I find this also very cool. In, in this image, these osteoclasts, which are colored differently than up here, um, they've actually degraded a little bit deeper into the bone tissue. And it looks like right here, this is actually going to be in the formation of spongy bone. You can actually see the beginnings of trabeculite, which is kind of cool. But you can see that these regions were hollowed out by the function of the osteoclast. So that's kind of cool. Now, one other thing about osteoclasts is they become maximally activated with low blood calcium and elevated PTH and decreased calcitonin. We're going to talk about this hormone system in the next video, but I wanted to just allude to this, that osteoclasts, they degrade bone tissue, but they're very important cells for maintaining blood calcium levels. Blood calcium is necessary for a lot of processes, calcium in general. For example, clotting, blood clotting requires calcium. Muscle contraction, muscle contraction and generating action potentials along neurons all requires calcium. And so maintaining appropriate blood calcium levels is important. So if calcium becomes too low in the blood, we're going to have a gland called the parathyroid gland, which is going to release parathyroid hormone. And the function of parathyroid hormone is going to be to increase blood calcium. One of the th ways that parathyroid hormone, or PTH, accomplishes this is by stimulating the activity of osteoclasts. So elevated PTH is going to stimulate their activity. They're going to become more activated, and they're going to function more in degrading the bone matrix, which is going to release calcium into the blood, bringing it back up to normal levels. That's just negative feedback right there. Also, PTH will inhibit the function of osteoblasts. Osteoblasts will actually decrease blood calcium levels because in order to secrete the bone matrix, they have to pull calcium out of the blood and deposit it into bone. So PTH ought to increase the activity of osteoclasts while also decreasing the activity of osteoblasts. 
Also, osteoclasts will respond more when there's decreased levels of calcitonin, which is the antagonistic hormone to PTH. We're going to talk about this bullet point in way more detail in the next video when we actually look at the negative feedback regulation of calcium and osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Okay, But as for now, hopefully this video made sense to you and you understand a little bit about the lineage of osteoclasts and also their function. And hopefully these pictures right here gave you a really good understanding of what they're actually doing. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.